Thank you very much indeed, and it's a, a great pleasure to be here. Can, can everyone hear? It's a tricky room. You have to have this division. That was, uh, could I thank Russ and Michelle for a very inspiring talk. And I'm sure we're going to come back several times during the day to her three majorities and some of the other challenges which uh, she has set us. I wanted to talk today about how the Global Compact and the role of the Global Compact can play in this uh, process. When the former Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Kofi Annan, uh, announced the, the forming of the Global Compact and challenged business to sign up to the principles of the Global Compact. Uh, part of his genius, I think, was that he... Thank you. Should I turn? Yes, turn it. Thank you. You get too much of me. Can you still hear? <laughs> part of his genius was that he he did not just address business, but he included civil society and labor organizations in, in, in that. And that, I think, is very important, because there is no way that business alone, is it working? No? I'm taller than Mrs. Michelle. Uh, Part of the, uh, the, we cannot do these things on our own. No sector of society can address the sort of challenges that we heard about on their own. So, we produced in the Global Compact, we have these ten principles, and they are the absolute core of the Global Compact. Principles which cover human rights, the environment, working conditions, labor, and lastly, but extremely importantly, corruption. And uh, people sign up to these principles. Businesses read them, they think this sounds terrific, and they sign up. But of course, these are high-level principles, and it's not enough just to sign up. You have to do more than that. And when a business signs up, they commit to report every year publicly on what they're doing to address each of these uh, uh, principles. And that's not always obvious at first. I can remember in, because sometimes we look at the principles and think, well, there's not much I can do there. I remember in my Shell days, I used to think that being a heavy industry, heavy construction, oil exploration and so on, that we had nothing to do with child labor. Uh, and that's simply not true. We discovered, for example, in Brazil, that uh, we put ethanol in the gasoline, Ethanol comes from sugarcane, and sugarcane in Brazil has an enormous child labor problem. So unless we began to address that, we were actually ignoring an important part of it. And then, of course, when you start there, you realize it's not just sugarcane. We have uniforms in our stations, where are they made, etc., etc., toys in our stations, and, and so on. So in any business, when you start to dig into it, you find that there are places where you have uh, impacts which sometimes you didn't think about uh, at first. So we need to uh, think and learn from others and one of the things that we have produced now is a, a blueprint produced by the Global Compact to try and help business leaders to go through these, these issues. There's, for example, some fascinating work done by an, a group of businesses called Business Leaders in uh, human rights. They looked at what human rights really means for, for business and in different countries they produced a kind of matrix to say what can you do, what's directly within your control obviously your own people, what influence you can have in society on this and how you can work. And I commend that sort of thing to you. These are extremely practical uh, documents. Now, if in the Global Compact you sign up and, and don't report, then we gradually, after a year or so, we cross you off the list again. And in spite of crossing people off the list, we've crossed about a thousand companies off the list, we still are growing quite rapidly, and we have about 6,000 companies around the world, over half of which are in, in the developing world. In the... Uh, the 
blueprint that we have, uh, we have three circles. The first circle, absolutely fundamental, is the ten principles. And I've just spoken about that. But the second is what we call engaging with the global compact. Uh, and two of those very important areas are sector groups and issue groups. Issue groups on climate or sector groups, for example, pharmaceutical industry or, or the extractive industries getting together and seeing how these principles can be particularly applied in, in their businesses. But one of the most important uh, activities are actually the local networks of the global compact. Because in the end, nothing is achieved in Geneva or New York. We can sit and talk about it, but it doesn't actually get done. It's only done in each and every country. And the problems and issues in those countries are, are different. And the local networks, we have about 80 local networks now, uh, spread around the world. Some of them are just beginning, some of them are faltering. I suppose a bit more than half of them are really effective. It's very much work in progress. But they bring together big business, small businesses, because without small businesses we cannot transform society. Uh, civil society organizations, national and international, to look and see what the issues are in that country, what are the priorities, and how can these different groups get together to address them, whether it's, it's human rights, working conditions, environment, or corruption, or in some countries, all of those. i give you one example. Uh, one of our relatively new, and uh, it's been formed about two years now, is a local network in, in Sudan. And that, I think, is really making some very interesting progress. It brings together uh, into very good Sudanese companies, also international companies such as the Chinese State Petroleum Company, the Indian State Petroleum Company. We brought in investors, major investment funds, to visit Sudan, which is a difficult country and often extremely controversial, and to look and see how business, because if you're going to solve the problems in Sudan, you will need investment. And much as people shout in other parts of the world that you shouldn't invest in Sudan, it is necessary to have proper investment and to grow business. And this is a way, working in conjunction with the government, that you can address some of these uh, issues. You have a local network uh, here in, in South Africa, and I uh, commend it to you. There is a, a second circle which is extremely important and uh, that is action in support of broader UN goals. And when we have gone through in our uh, work, looked at our own business, looked at what we're doing, uh, when we've worked with local networks in different parts of the world and are looking to see what can be done and what the priorities in, in those areas are. The, the air, last area is what can we do in support of wider goals, such as, for example, the Millennium Development Goals and so on. And this is a point which is difficult for business. Some of us kind of roll our eyes and say, now we're going into solving all the problems.